Airbnb made 1.9 billion dollars in profits last year. This is big because they lost 80% of revenue in 8 weeks during COVID. This is bigger because not only did they make a comeback from the dead, but they also beat their tech counterparts who have made massive losses since then. This is the story of how listening to users and solving for their pain points helped Airbnb build a long-term business. We'll break down Airbnb's secret sauce. How did they crack profitability? What did they figure out that other travel players couldn't? And how did they become bigger than the world's top five hotel brands put together? I'll tell you about seven things that Airbnb got just right that made them massively successful. Let's dig in. Now, to understand how Airbnb grew to become this big, we need to zoom out and understand how they acquired their first thousand users. This is super important because this set a culture of empathy and user first thinking at Airbnb. You see, startups in their early days want to go all out guns blazing to acquire users and makes sense, right? But this becomes a problem later on because their company's fundamentals remain shaken and unfinished. So, in its early days and great guidance from Y Combinator, Airbnb focused on one thing. They understood that they want to get a hundred people that loved them instead of 10,000 that kinda liked them. You see, the idea was clear. Prioritize quality over quantity and build a circle of brand loyalists that loved Airbnb and promoted them in their social groups. Now, this may sound small, but it was massive because it allowed them to get super deep into understanding who their real users were and what their business model should look like in the future. We know this, right? Airbnb runs an asset line business. There are over 7 million listings on Airbnb and 4 million hosts. But Airbnb themselves don't own any of these properties. They built a massive marketplace which has two users. The hosts, who are sellers, and the guests, who are the buyers. Now, with a small initial user base, they understood that the average Airbnb user was significantly different from a normal hotel user. Then users were choosing Airbnb to get a better sense of the culture they were traveling to while also saving some money. Remember this line, get a better sense of culture while saving a little more money. This is important because this would influence the products Airbnb built in the future heavily. And also their tagline, live like a local, is a testament to this. They knew that Airbnb users don't just want a bed to sleep in, in a new city, but they want to experience the vibe, the people, and the delicacies that were available locally. This has allowed them to position Airbnb as an affordable option and never as the cheapest option. Now, as you know, there's a huge difference between affordable and cheap. Would you tell your friends you bought the cheapest car or an affordable car that you could get your hands on? It's the same logic that Airbnb used. They kept the first users close and sought for each step of the product in collaboration with them. Which is when they understood that to go to a broader audience, the first thing that they will have to solve for now is trust. Allowing strangers to sleep in your home is an absurdly new concept and fears are only natural. So they set out to create an onboarding and booking experience on their website that was absolutely perfect. So homeowners who put up their properties to be booked were pushed to fill in the minutest of details about their property, like pet friendliness, type of view, type of TV that they had, etc. And as Brian Cheskini recently said, they wanted to elevate the user experience to more than five stars. So they literally storyboarded the entire app experience with storyboarding artists from Pixar. And they only did this because they kept trust at the center of their product, which also made feedback super valuable. I mean, think about it, right? People trust people with higher reputations more than anyone else. Like, would you give out your place to a tenant with three stars? Or if you were traveling, would you stay at a place that had four stars and horribly bad reviews? So it made sense. And to go a step further, hosts would only get good business if their track record with guests had higher ratings and vice versa for guests looking for places to stay. Plus, hosts were incentivized with programs like super hosts that allowed them to stand out and generate more business. This also became a massively charged community of hosts who bonded on common passions like hosting, love for travel, meeting people, and all that. A community of travelers and hosts that were driven by trust became a massive moat for Airbnb. And you'll see more of this coming into action soon. Airbnb founders understood early that personalization was core to building great experiences and trust for both guests 
and hosts. Brian Chesky said, The number one reason people chose to travel on Airbnb is they want to live like a local. They don't want to be stuck in tourist lines, fighting with crowds to see the same thing as everyone else. Airbnb solved this by creating hosts out of homeowners. And it's ingenious because when you're a host, you're not only giving your place away for a couple of nights. No, you're hosting someone at your home. So you offer more than just generic hospitality. You welcome people from around the world into your community. So things like keeping a handwritten welcome letter, cooking breakfast for your guest, wine bottles kept in the fridge, taking your guests on a tour of the city were highlights that started popping up all across social media. Now, solving for this personalization also made Airbnb design very particular features. For example, a matching system to understand the traveler's preferences and then match them with the homes, neighborhoods and experiences that meet their needs and personalities. This was a clear differentiator that they wanted to establish using personalization and interesting experiences to build a community around Airbnb. And this starts from everything around Airbnb's website and app UI to features like categories, allowing people to serve houses based on things like design, amazing views, historical homes, etc. This built tremendous brand love for Airbnb. Personalization, trust and community kept feeding into each other like a flywheel and it gave rise to a massive growth engine for Airbnb, their genius referral program. Unlike the same old referral programs of that era where people were promised MacBooks, iPhones and money for referrals, Airbnb knew they had a better way. They knew that the core value proposition of their marketplace was experiences that they offered. They were confident that if Airbnb's referral bonus made their users experience the core value proposition of Airbnb more, it would be wildly successful. So the bet was that the reward to their referral program will revolve around experiences and not money on gadgets or all of that. So they launched Airbnb credits. Probably the best referral on the planet because it was so successful, they had to shut it down. Now it was iconic because of multiple reasons. First, it had personalization at its core. So when you sent your referral link to a friend, they would see a screen like this with a photo of you enjoying your vacation. Plus when your friend decided to use your code, both you and your friend would get $40 each. This incentivized both parties to be in the loop. Plus, it built a beautiful tracking system where you could exactly see where in the journey are the people that you have referred. And you could also send them little images to book an Airbnb and therefore get $40 in credit. Now, with trust, personalization and community on their side, Airbnb was looking like a rocket ship. They also clocked $4.8 billion in revenue in 2019. But then, the pandemic struck. Airbnb's revenues dropped by 80% in 8 weeks. Its valuation dropped by half. It's so much IPO looked in danger. They had to leave 25% of its workforce and they cut their executive salaries by half. Business pundits wondered if Airbnb will ever be able to achieve profitability ever. And this return from the dead is what made Airbnb the courts of the travel industry. And this brings us to our fifth point where Airbnb went from a divisional org to a functional org. See, like many other tech companies, Airbnb had expanded their org into teams like experiences, transportation, homes, magazines, etc. But they understood that although this is how most companies work, Airbnb had to do something different. This previous structure basically created 10 different marketing teams and did not allow for smooth collaboration to happen between them. So when the pandemic was raging, Airbnb converted their current talk structure into a functional one. And this created the difference. What this means is instead of having different teams for specific verticals like experience, transport, etc., they had broader teams like design, marketing, and business. This allowed the teams to collaborate way more closely and innovate way faster. And with the org in place, they took some bold steps. Which is when they decided that instead of launching updates every few days like any other tech company, they would do two big launches every year. A summer and a winter release. The idea was simple enough. Airbnb would launch all of its new features, homes, experiences and benefits by these releases. Where they launched categories, split stays, air cover for guests and Airbnb experiences. Around this time, Airbnb also took a conscious call to prioritize the revenue over just user growth. But how do you do that? You make sure that you retain your current users on the product. You get them to pay for more of your services and therefore increase their average order value. So for example, 
a new customer comes to Airbnb and books a stay for a hundred bucks. Now this is fine, it's a one-time transaction. But the bigger challenge for any product is to get them to book another stay with you in the future. Therefore, increasing your user's lifetime value. And how would Airbnb increase a user's lifetime value? Simple, make them book longer stays and offer more products that they can buy from you. And that's what Airbnb did. They switched their focus to experiences and long-term stays. The post-COVID travel world, as Chesky says, will never be the same. He has famously said that office as we know it is over. But this phenomena is more than just revenge travel as it came to be known. This is a gigantic shift between how people traveled and lived. We believe that the lines between travel and living are blurring and the global pandemic has accelerated the ability to live anywhere. You see, the way people traveled before this was that they would work for about 50 weeks from their home in a year and travel for a week or two in total. But COVID and work from home completely changed that. People now had the flexibility to go and work from anywhere. Plus, newest travelers like you and me aren't just looking for touristy attractions, right? We are ready to pay a slight premium for these interesting experiences. This is where both Airbnb's products come into the picture again. Long-term stays and experiences. Airbnb added the feature to book long-term stays that are of 28 plus days. And it worked. It accounts for 21% of gross nights booked in quarter four of 2022. Plus, Airbnb's experiences as an offering that really helps the company meet the new demand of not just travel, but wanting to experience the place like a local. And lastly, one final move that worked massively for Airbnb was its shift to brand marketing. See, the pandemic made Airbnb realize that they were over-reliant on performance marketing channels and were spending massively on customer acquisition cost. So in the first quarter of 2021, they cut their sales and marketing expenses by 28%, spending a total of $229 million. Now, Airbnb started removing its reliance from performance marketing and adopted a way more sustainable way of growing, which was brand marketing. Now, as you can see on this chart, Airbnb has a massive direct-to-website pull, and it made sense to not overly rely on search and search ads as a channel. So they took two massive calls. Use performance marketing as a laser to specifically balance a demand supply problem, which basically means that they would only use specific ads to sell specific properties whenever there is a demand problem for the property. But they won't use performance marketing primarily to bring in large chunks of users. And second, they would use brand marketing to bring in users onto the Airbnb product. They switch their role of marketing from buying customers to that of educating their customers. And this bet paid off and the reliance on brand marketing has become a playbook for tons of brands to follow across the world.